Uh, talking a few minutes here with Dave Archer, former Atlanta Falcons quarterback, and obviously now voice of the Atlanta Falcons, one of the voices of Atlanta of the Atlanta Falcons uh, radio network. And Dave, you talking about you know obviously it takes repetition and for these guys to really get comfortable and really know what they're doing in this scheme, it's going to take reps. So spit, staying on that, how much of the starters do we see against the Lions on Friday in the first preseason game? How many reps do you think those starters are going to get? to get uh, a good bit. I think that, uh, you know, what we went through a year ago, and there's been a lot of conversation about what Arthur Smith learned about, okay, how do how much do I play my regular guys? Um, do we have continuity going into the regular season because maybe they took less reps during the, during, practice, during uh, games? The problem for coaches nowadays is it's not back like back when I played where we had full goal line in the afternoon or they could do nine on seven and it would be basically full go. They, the rules now stipulate that the physicality of practice is limited. And so even though they call it thud tempo, which means you come off, make contact, and then you just you slow down uh, or don't take guys to the ground, it's still, it's, it's, it doesn't simulate the game. And so now you're working more on, <clears throat> on technique. And, and so now you hope that the physicality translates once you get on the field. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. And so the games are huge now. And I think that maybe that was a learning uh, process for Arthur Smith his first time as a first time head coach. How much do I emerge? How much continuity? How much do I believe in what we're doing? Or how, how much do I believe in the five that are up front for me? And do they have a grasp of what we want to do? From a physicality standpoint, do we teach that well enough? I think you probably learned some stuff last year, and I think you're going to see that translate in the preseason games. I think you're going to see these guys, the regular guys, play more. I think you're going to see them trying to find that the synergy between five offensive linemen. And I think it may take them a lot. You may get into the second preseason, maybe even the third preseason game, before you see that five solidified that will start against the Saints on opening day. Yeah, I'm with you there, Dave. Like you said, there's so much competition on on every you know at, at, on at every at every position for the Falcons this year that I think the starters really have to play more. Arthur Smith has to know what he's going to put out there week one because I think he had a better idea last year, and that's maybe why we didn't see so many of the the starters during the preseason. I think he had a better idea, better grasp of who he wanted to put out there week one, and then two, obviously week one against the Eagles last year kind of looked like we weren't necessarily all the way ready to go or as ready as we could have been per se but I don't think that's going to be the case this year so I'm with you and sticking to that besides quarterback because I know everybody's obviously going to have their eyes on Marcus Mariota, Desmond Ritter, how that's going to play out especially week one during the Lions what position or position group should fans be watching the most on Friday during the first preseason game is it the quarterbacks are not the quarterbacks. Is it the offensive line that you were talking about earlier? Is it the linebackers, or is it some other spot that the, the fans should be watching out for when it comes to preseason time? I think you can. I think you can go down the roster and man, you look at the DBs. I think that you like you like AJ Terrell and you like Casey Hayward. What else do you What else do you see? And so you're going to have a bunch of guys that are scrambling to be that depth behind those two players. Who's your nickel? You know, is Isaiah Oliver going to be ready to go for, for that nickel spot? Or is Mike Ford, who's been playing the nickel, going to be that guy? He's an elite-level special teams player that never really been leaned on to be, you know, your third corner, essentially. He right now is rotating in there. He's playing extremely well in practice right now. Isaiah Oliver still nursing the knee injury and trying to come back from that. He had, was really good a year ago before he got hurt. So where is that at, the secondary depth? Um, I begin to look at the interior offense or interior defensive line, the rotations there. Uh, Terry Tangelo has really shown up um, as a third tackle in there. Um, <clears throat> there's been some injury, obviously some of the injury in there as well as dictated other guys are getting more reps. Um, so I, I, I'm not sure that you can narrow it down to one particular place um, that you're looking at. Certainly, I think you like your top three receivers. I think you'd love, obviously, if one of those guys might even you throw your tight end in there and Kyle Pitts, he might even factor in as, as one of your wide receivers to, to a certain extent. I think you really feel good about that part. I think it's more about what group do you really feel good about and then take all the other groups, and those are the ones you're going to concentrate on. But I think the receivers, 
I feel good about them. I think the running back core is much deeper than they're going to get credit for. I know one of them is a rookie in Tyler Algier, but I think he's going to be a solid player. I think there's some really good competition. Quadre Olison, Caleb Huntley, and Damon Williams, all those guys are competing for that extra spot behind CP and, and Tyler Algier. So I like that group as well. Um, so those are a couple of, to me, solids that you're hanging your hat on. The perimeter defenders, I think there's a great deal of versatility in the perimeter defenders. Lorenzo Carter certainly will have a guy, will be one of those guys on the edge coming from the Giants. I think Ade Ogundeji, what he did a year ago, kind of emerged as a guy, he's a big body dude that I think earned a lot, learned a lot last year. And then you got the two young dudes that are coming in to draft that are going to factor in there. I think the interior linebacker core, there's a lot of versatility there. When does Troy Anderson make his presence felt? He's a big dude that can run and wants to hit you and knock you on the ground. Uh, I think he's going to be a dynamic blitzer as well. There's a lot of fun stuff to talk about. There's a lot of fun things that we're going to have to watch to unfold over these preseason games. But I think you're working from uh, a, an area where I think you like the players that are competing. It's not that you're trying to find the lesser of evils. And I think that's a, that's a big deal. I think the upgrade from a roster standpoint is going to find that the player upgrade, whoever plays, and whoever that second guy in is, there's going to be a dramatic upgrade in those players. Man, Dave's got me ready to watch the Falcons and Lions preseason football already, man. Great stuff so far. It's Dave Archer, guys, former Atlanta Falcons quarterback here joining me on the Hometown Take Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. Dave, now I want to hone in on the defensive side of the football because Dean P's got a little fired up a couple days ago in his press conference talking about he's sick of being tired, uh, he's sick of hearing how bad this team is, how bad this defense is going to be, because, you know, he was talking about how guys start to believe that after a while, which is true. So he talked about bringing a culture change to this Falcons defense. So I ask you this, with guys like A.J. Terrell, Casey Hayward, Rashawn Evans, who you mentioned, Michael Walker, A.K., Arnold Epichetti, Lorenzo Carter, Grady Jarrett, some of the solid players on defense as well, some of the solid players with high ceilings, how good can this Falcons defense be this year? You make good points as far as they're good players, and, and it's appropriate to point out what Dean said. But the people he was talking to aren't going to play. You know, he was talking to the media, and he's trying to raise the bar. He's trying to raise those the players' perception of themselves. So now this becomes, what do we do as players and what I see is the work ethic and the bar that they're ex that's acceptable to them. They're trying to raise that. I see it happening with with takeaways and practice and the way they rally to one another, how much they care about one another. That's all. That's that, that's all you hear it talked about, but they're living it. And and I think that when you've got guys like Grady Jarrett have a work ethic that's through the through the through the roof. And by the way, Grady looks different this year. I, I he is. He employed a, a guy that was helping with his diet, workout regimen, all that kind of stuff. This dude is completely chiseled out of granite. He looks, he's unblockable right now. And I, I don't want that to be an indictment on the Falcon offensive line. I think we'll, we'll hopefully see that show up uh, on game day in preseason. But he's setting a bar. And so A.J. Terrell is doing the same thing. I think the two young safeties have taken on a, a role of leadership when it comes to Jalen Hawkins and Richie, Richie Grant, two guys that are trying to raise. I heard, I heard Jalen Hawkins talking yesterday after, after the meeting. He's just after uh, practice. And he's talking from this level of perception and level of what they want to be and, and how they're trying to get better each day. They're not worried about the Lions. They're not worried about the Jets or any of that kind of the Saints. They're trying to win each day and getting better each day, and they're demanding that one another get better. That's what you got to do. And so Dean, can, Dean, I'm sure, said what he said to the media, said to them, too. I'm sure it was not lost on them. I'm tired of you guys thinking you're not any good and 15th not acceptable. We need to be a top-10 defense here. We need to create opportunities. We need to win games ourselves on the defensive side of the ball. It's not depending on someone else. And let's not hang our head when somebody says we're not very good. All of that, you know, you bundle all that together. And that's what they're trying to do is raise the bar. I, I see it happening. But again, you can talk about it, um, they can practice it, but it's got to come to life in games. I think we'll see some of that, no question. I agree with you. I think we'll see some of it. A part of the reason, too, is that a lot of guys this year, Dave, are on one-year deals, kind of prove-it deals, 
and you know we got rookies as well wanting to come in and prove themselves. The point is there are a lot of guys on this team that have something to prove, that have chip on their shoulders. And with that, I ask you this, and this is the last thing here, Dave. I really appreciate the time. What guys brought in this year that are on one-year deals, so not you know guys who are on the last year of their rookie contracts or anything like that, guys that were brought in this year, brought in on one-year deals this year, like Rashawn Evans and guys like that. What guys brought in on one-year deals this year have chance have realistic chances, you think, to get new contracts or get extensions from the Falcons? Yeah, I think you said Sean Evans are the first two guys that come to mind. There's no question about it. There's two young players. The two guys, what, 26 years old, both those guys? Yeah. The former number one draft picks. Both those comes, guys come from proud programs in Alabama and Georgia. Um, you know, for Lorenzo Carter, he, he you know, went to New York, the Big Apple, all that, that has to offer, and, and frankly didn't perform maybe to the level of his draft pick. But here he comes back home. He's back down here. He seems very comfortable. He's excited about playing in front of his hometown crowd, in front of his family. And, and as you said, and I've been talking about it a good bit since we, we went to camp, is the chip on the shoulder thing cannot be underestimated because you're not talking about a guy that's 33 or 34 years old that's trying to get one more contract. We're talking about guys that were highly regarded that for whatever reason, whether it's injury or loss of confidence in Marcus Mariota or whoever, it, they are young players. Marcus Mariota is 28 years old. Mariota's, or Mariota is 28 years old. He's only going to be 29 until mid-season. This dude hadn't even reached his crime, prime yet. And so these guys are trying to say, wait a minute, I was number two overall. Mariota was number two overall. If you were the, if you were the rookie quarterback, if you look at his rookie numbers, he had 105 touchdown passes and 15 interceptions in Oregon. He won the Heisman Trophy. He ran for, I think, 35 touchdowns in Oregon. If he were coming out this year, those numbers, he'd be the number one pick of the draft. He'd be over, yeah. over young. He'd still be that guy. So where is that guy? That guy's there. He's in there. We saw it, like, what, year two in Tennessee? We saw it. We saw it appear. That's the guy you got to find. And so for these other guys like that, you're, you're, you're exactly right. You're bang on. I mean, it's a chip on the shoulder, opportunity to prove, whatever it may be. And you now have pride factors in here. At some point, your pride kicks in and says, wait a minute, I was a number one draft pick. I'm going to play. I'm going to show these people I was a number one draft pick. And so you pointed out the main ones right there, and there's no question – that's what I'm expecting. That's why Arthur Smith and Terry Fonta went and got him. Got him. They were expecting that as well. We will see how it all unfolds starting as early as this Friday. The Falcons are taking on the lines. You can hear it all right here on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. And you can hear the man you just heard for these past couple of minutes here, Dave Archer, former Atlanta Falcons quarterback, and he's going to be joining West Durham on all of the Atlanta Falcons broadcast right here on 92.9 The Game. Well, Dave, like I said, this is going to be one of the most, I think, intriguing Atlanta Falcons preseasons that we've ever had, that we've had in a long time. And uh, I really appreciate you uh, coming on here for a couple minutes. You got me hype. I think you got everybody hype to watch the Atlanta Falcons football, even the preseason, Dave. Thank you so much for the time, man. Appreciate you, Dave. That is Dave Archer, former Atlanta Falcons quarterback. He was here on the WadeFord.com hotline.